couple quick things. Uh, some awards from yesterday. Room one for the most broken things, including the bed. <laughs> uh, room three for using the most stuff. <laughs> because there was stuff opened every place. You guys don't get to see much of myself and Jamie and a couple of the other people because we're the people that both set up and then have to clean up afterwards. And then also room one for the most calls into the ND Star operator. We, we lost count after 10 calls in a 15 minute uh, sim. So, uh, you know, good job. Uh, this morning, obviously, we talked about we're going to be talking about moulage. Now, for those of you that have, uh, how many people have been doing moulage? <coughs> Got a couple, okay. You probably understand that in an hour we're not going to be able to teach you everything. Hopefully in the next, pre or in the next three hours afterwards you get a lot more hands-on. Uh, this is an intro to it. We do anticipate that you're going to need to uh, practice this stuff a bit, especially some of these different ones. So that's an anticipation. The other thing is you will be getting before the end of the three-week period. I'm not on? Something's not on right. I wasn't on. Any better now? Whoa, real loud. Um, before the end of the time, you... <laughs> hey, this is going to go good. <laughs> You'll get a, uh, an actual book from us, a recipe, on the particular ones we're using. There's a couple of them right now that we're in a little bit of a mix on because we're trying some different stuff. That's why we, we don't have it completely ready yet. Uh, but you'll appreciate some of these as we go through some of the different things. Uh, it will help you out. Okay, supply list. This is just real quick. The, we sent out a list to all your different facilities, what, a month ago, two months ago? If, if you don't have it, talk to Amy, we will get it to you, but it's a supply list particularly talking about medications. The medication, the empty ones, please. We don't want full ones. We would appreciate getting those as soon as we can because we will take care of laminating or helping laminate, getting those things set up for you, but we gotta get them back here and get you know, with enough time to do it because they are time taking and, you know, having you sit there and try to do all of these, especially without having done them before, could burn up an awful lot of time. So if you can get them here to us, we will take care of most of that for you. Uh, ideally, well, not ideally, you've got to have them here before May 1st. If you can get them here earlier, uh, our next training is what, the... Yeah, 29th of April, if you want to bring them with you then, or if you can get them to us earlier, we'll start working on that. So, uh, but by May 1st at the end. This is the medications. There's a few other supply type deals that they said you're going to need. Don't worry about bringing those at this point. But the medications and the medication boxes. Okay. Uh, the mantra, we don't throw anything out. Uh, I know Don just cringes every time I say that, but it's true. We... Everything we reuse, all those medications, because think about it, if you're going to run a sim that's one an hour, if you're going to run that same one in a place three or four or five times, you either have to have that many supplies or you've got to be able to reuse your supplies. Plus the fact if you're opening boxes, etc., especially because they involve liquids, those things get beat up. Well, if you laminate them, they really last. So. Uh, Again, when you're in the rooms too, please don't throw things out. There are a few things such as needles that we do throw out, but not in the garbage in the sharps container. The rest of the stuff, you know, try not to throw out. And for the guys here, you know, you're now officially men who play with dolls. Uh, at one of the international conferences, a group of us met. Uh, that we were all paramedics involved in simulation. And we, we couldn't quite really get a title for us, but as, as somebody, after a few drinks, started thinking, said, you know, does this mean that we're now men who play with dolls? <laughs> so, I guess we are. Okay, this is one of our uh, mannequins that we'd really, really hope to get because it was probably the most accurate for the patients that we're dealing with the most amount of times. 
Uh, our only problem is that nobody's truly built this one yet, but we're really hoping. We hope that somebody will. Uh, and it's, you know, give you a few seconds here to read that. And I'll try to move back and forth so I'm not standing in any one person's way. <laughs> I can't quite be like Dr. Yearwood. I, that's the only time I've ever seen Dr. Yearwood sit. I've never seen him sit and present before. It was just wow, because he's usually all over the place. No, this is one we wish we had, it, but nobody's made it yet. Because <laughs> it's truly, you know, think of the people with the ER experience, ambulance experience. You know, this one pretty much takes in everything that we deal with. Okay. This mannequin will be able to fit between the toilet and the bathtub, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, he fits, but they, there's no way to get him out yeah, without the fire department. Okay, this is a big one for both us and for everybody you deal with. We are unable to make our environment latex free. We just have not been able to find out a way. Our mannequins have latex in them. Most of it's somewhat buried, but it's still there. So be aware, you know, does anybody here have latex allergies? Well, yeah. Yeah, and it's something when, we, when you start to do these simulations, you got to make people aware that there is latex there that they may come in contact with. We try to limit it, but I'm going to show you there's a lot of stuff we use that is latex based. Now, I'm looking for stuff that isn't latex based, but it's real hard to find some replacements for that. So, moulage. This is, this is what puts the icing on the cake for us. You know, it's really going to enhance the overall uh, simulation. Because if you just do a simulation with just the mannequin, it's good. But when you add moulage to it, you know, now you're getting it. Now the stuff is really happening. And it's not just your old theories of moulage that you know, we're putting a wound on. We're making it. it is everything from sight, sounds, smells, feels. We try to get everything in there because the more you add to that, the more realism you bring and the more the learning experience is going to be. Also, it allows that learner to draw on this experience much easier in the real situation. I'll give you an example. We all are taught about GI bleeds, right? <laughs> but the first time you experienced one for real with that stench, didn't it set you right back and actually probably delayed everything and caused you some real grief? Do you realize you can reproduce that smell? And if you've got that for these people, it jumps them that far ahead. So that when they hit that first one, they're not you know, nauseated for the whole thing and trying to figure out you know, where's the closest puke bucket because I may be <laughs> throwing up in there too. It is that art of making injuries and illness involving looks of the patient, the dress of the patient, the area around the patient, the smell, the sounds, that whole idea, getting everything in there. Moulage takes it all in. It's only limited by how we think. And man, when you start looking at these things, you're, you're going to think a lot more. Now, I'm going to go through this stuff fairly quick so we get through in an hour. You do have the hand out there. We are going to talk about this stuff. You are going to get the recipes. So <coughs> taking a lot of notes really isn't necessary, I hope. But you know, there's a lot of different things in here you can do. It's not your old approach. Be aware, the same moulage you use on people can permanently <coughs> damage our mannequins. Our mannequins are not cheap. Uh, Kids, what was our order price on just Sim Man? Or not Sim Man, excuse me, on uh, Medi. Each, each truck has about $500,000 worth of Sim Man in them. Now think of that. That's a half million dollars. The skins on these guys are expensive. So we really, really, really prefer that we don't permanently stain them, especially not in the first week or two. Uh, so it, it does mean that we have to take some uh, changes in what we think, what we use, how we use it. So, no pens, markers, photocopies in contact with the mannequin skin. These things tattoo them, 
very quickly. We call them allergies. But even taking and putting down a photocopy on top of the mannequins, in some of the skin, it's going to very quickly transfer over. And it, the text will tell you, oh yeah, here we were setting this mannequin up, put this on top of him while we were doing something, pull it off, and we'd ruined his skin. And a skin, you know, depending, maybe a five or six hundred, seven hundred dollar skin. So we try not to destroy these things. So again, it just it takes a bit of brain power here of of changing the way we think on how we're doing stuff and sometimes taking a little bit more time to do it. And have we done these things? Yeah, we've done them. In fact, we just did one that uh, we wound up having to replace the whole face because we stained it. So, you know, we're looking at that environment, the responses that we can get from not only the mannequin, but the individuals, because that adds to it. You know, I, th I think about the, one of my best jobs ever in, in moulaging was somebody called me up for their EMT class and about three quarters of the way through and they said, we want to do a practical test. This is going to get them ready for the final exam. And I said, you know how to do this stuff. Come help us. So I went in about an hour or two before the class and did some moulage, particularly for their trauma one. And in their class, they had a, an RN who'd retired from a small town. And she wanted to be on the ambulance service because now she was retired and said, hey, man, I want to do this, help the service out. And so when she came into this test station, we, were, we informed them all this is just moulage and what it was. So, you know, it's just like if I'm using puke, I, I let people know, hey, it's oatmeal. You know, cinnamon raisin usually, but, you know, depending on my crowd, I, I add different smells to it so it actually smells real unless I'm just... You know, when I'm teaching the med students on like suction, I can't make it smell real for them because they get really turned off by that, so I just leave the cinnamon raisin smell in, but I'd add the smell. Did the same thing with this group. This nurse walked in, and she looked at the patient on the floor, and she said, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, and she just started backing up, and it's like, whoa. We tried to calm her down and said, just relax. Remember, it's all moulage. It looked so real. Oh, and she had to leave the room. Five minutes later, she came in, got right down by the patient, started the same thing again. Oh, my God. <laughs> it took her three different times to come in and work on it. And she just said, you know, I've dealt with this before. I've had this in, in our small town. We've had people like this. But it, I was expecting something very much unreal looking. And when I walked in and it was real looking, it just really threw me. So I figured it was the greatest compliment I've ever had. So, you know, what can we do? You know, the extent to the, which the simulation duplicates the motion clues, cues, the visual cues, any other sensory information adds to it. You know, that stinky breath. You know, that homeless person that, you know, you can smell 30 feet away. That homeless person that's been out there by the bonfire, you know, that really does add to it. That alcohol smell, when you get close to somebody who's got you know, a 400 level alcohol, really sets you back. When you add that to these, it really does help out. You know, there's, there is an unreal portion about this. We know these guys are mannequins. They're not alive, right? But we've got to set our stage looking at psychological fiction, you know, and building the whole thing. The story is part of this moulage. When we bring that all together, then you help your learners, you know, step into a real environment. You know, they're going to perceive the environment and the responses as possible. If they're not, you know, that detracts from it. Okay, medications, all our medications are simulated. Everything. It is simulated. The problem we have, and it, when we simulate it, it's all water and uh, alcohol. I use about uh, much less than a, an ounce of alcohol per gallon of distilled water. Okay, This is really important 
because if you use anything but distilled water in those mannequins, you will give them atherosclerotic disease in the mannequin. It builds up. Even normal saline will build up so incredibly quick in those lines that you're going to be plugging them. If there's a lot of small areas that it's got to go through, you will plug it up with anything in there. That's why we use distilled water or, you know, sometimes I get, uh, oh gosh, what's the other, not just distilled water. I go over to the med school and they've got some reverse osmosis setups that, you know, they, after they get the distilled water, they bring it through that. Uh, you know, distilled water with a little bit of alcohol. You know, uh, there are a few things in there that we have to if you say, uh, what is it, uh, dantrolene. What, what color is that? Yeah, yellow or orange, and you got to mix it up. Well, if you're going to use something like that, we can do a setup with them, and literally what we do is just take a foley and set it up and make another set of skin, put the foley there so you'll start the IV on the, on the foley catheter, which is pretty good, and you can inject it through that, then it doesn't go through the system. And for, for dantrolene, you know what I use? And they have to mix it up too. Use tang, literally the dry tang, and it's the same difficulty. I don't know if you've, if you haven't used it, it's very difficult to mix. It takes a long time to dissolve. But we've got, you know, ways of mixing those things up and making it. So the other thing we do, big one, labeled simulation, if you, or simulated. If you notice, every med we use had a, is it a yellow sticker? Orange. Orange sticker. The, for those of you that don't know me, I am very, very color uh, inhibited or whatever you want to call it. I grew up around a red, green, blue color blind father. Never learned about colors, literally. Uh, you know, I got to make sure before I leave that I check with my wife that I'm you know, not wearing something really stupid colored. Uh, I'm not color blind, but when not learning colors, I had spent an awful lot of time trying to compare colors side by side to make sure things look right. Uh, but they've got this label that says simulated on it. The reason we do that is other simulation centers have had problems where people, you know, which one of us haven't stuck a med in our pocket during some time treating a patient? You know, where's a convenient place to put it? You stick it in your pocket. A couple places have found that <coughs> they had people that went from their simulation to patient care and start pulling meds out of their pocket that looked real to use and didn't think about it. Now, ours look real, but with the simulated label, at least they're you know, coming to that conclusion very quick. Mayo has run into a huge problem with it because their simulation center is right in the hospital and they pull people during shifts to come in. And they're one of the places that have now started to experiment with using all real meds all non-expired real meds in all their simulations. Uh, but the, they've had to make some real adjustments to their mannequins. How does that not plug up their mannequins? That's, they've had to make some adjustments doing other, <laughs> other veins, et cetera, onto their mannequins, and they can't run it through their pump systems and things like that. So uh, when I say pump systems, they're pump systems in the mannequins that measure quantities, et cetera. So, uh, you know, again, Save what you can, bring it in. The other thing is not to you know, build up a supply of these because there's going to be points where you do lose it during a simulation, then you need the spare ones. Okay, here's one of our problems. Each of our mannequins we found that they didn't have one formula for the skin. The head skin is made different than the chest skin, and that's made different than the legs and the arms. Three different, at least three different uh, products and that things stick differently. You'll find when we're in my room we'll actually look at Medi and use Medi. This is one's, one of the types you're going to have on your uh, trucks. The face skin we couldn't get makeup to stick to very good at all. In fact we couldn't get even some of the different latexes to stick. But we did find something that I use. Rubber cement sticks beautifully to the face skin. So this is what you're going to have to deal with. You be aware that there are differences in each part of those mannequins. Now, we have not extensively played with junior and baby as far as moulage goes. So we're going to be learning as we go with those. 
the, the moulage that you've been used to using may well stain permanently. We stick away from any of our oil-based stuff. Uh, you know, please stick to what we either tell you or give you unless you really are trying it you know, on some place like on the back of these mannequins or something where you really couldn't see it. Try that out. Like I said, we just did one the other day. Wound up staining a full face on the mannequin. Now the only really lucky deal is we're replacing that head anyway. <laughs> so we were taking that one off and sending it back and it had all these little yellow dots all over it because the makeup that we used was a, a, a red and then a brown on top and the brown went right through the red and turned out to stain. It's like, ah. The other thing we'll tell you is you can't make up these mannequins a day ahead. <coughs> we have found that makeup, when it stays on there for more than like 10, 12 hours, really does stain in, even though it's supposedly not. So. Okay. They're all different. We, again, we try to stick with our things like the creams and the water bases. We stick away from the oils, the greases. Uh, if you want to try something, let us know too. The neat part about this, some of you have already been involved in moulage. We want to hear from you. If you use something or do something that really works out good, or vice versa, turns out horrible, we want to hear about it because we will pass it along to everybody. This is going to be an ongoing uh, learning situation for all of us, not just for the first three months or six months, but for the next 10 or 20 years of SIMND. We will hopefully be, you know, finding some really neat new stuff that we're able to do. If you go someplace and you hear about something, we want to hear about it, you know, so we can hopefully implement it. When cleaning our mannequins, be aware, there's a limited amount of water. You, don't, you can't immerse these guys. You don't want to bring a bucket of water in there and start swabbing them down. There's all sorts of electrical and computer parts in the mannequins, so limit it. You know, we use a lot of these commercial wipes. The, some of them are called the Clorox wipes, just making sure they don't have bleach in it. But we use those an awful lot. We go to Sam's Club and get them in the three or four big things. and That really does a pretty good job cleaning up. There's also adhesive removers we use. One of the big ones I'll show you is Bond Off. It does work really good. However, we're telling you, it, once you use an adhesive remover, make sure you wash the skin afterwards with, again, soap and water or the wipes because otherwise leaving that on the skins tends to cause the skins to harden out. And we appreciate that that doesn't really happen because, again, replacement is quite expensive. And as Dr. Allen told you, our equipment budget really, really took a hit because of the increased costs for the, uh, the trucks themselves. That came all out of this. So uh, one of the things we have found for uh, sticky stuff that's on the mannequins, baby powder, talc, or cornstarch. Put on there, let it sit for 20 or 30 minutes. Brings that stuff off much easier. Now, choice. what's the difference between using the baby powder or the cornstarch or the talc? The smell usually. That's all that's been added. You know, a lot of the baby powders are now becoming cornstarch, I believe. Uh, but you know, I tend to use cornstarch just because there's no smell in it. WD-40. Are these, are these things that we'll have to purchase? You'll, <laughs> we'll start you out with, a, with some of it, but some of it you will have to purchase too. Each truck will get a moulage kit. Not a commercial moulage kit, but one that we make up. And that's what we'll get you started with. And it depends basically a lot on what our budget is. If we're able to supply you with a lot, we'll supply you with it, but we'll get you the basics anyway. So, uh, again, WD-40 <laughs> works really good to take some stuff off, but please don't leave it on the skin. You know, wash that skin with the soap and water afterwards in the area that use the WD-40. I like the can with the permanent nozzle on it because for those who use, use WD-40, that one that can that's got the tape nozzle, you always lose it. But the permanent nozzle one, you know, you're able to direct the spray, plus you don't lose the nozzle. Yeah. 
Again, the sticky stuff, the adhesive remover, baby power, let it sit for 30 minutes, and then you're still gonna have to wipe hard. Cleanup is underrated as far as most people don't give themselves enough time. This is why we don't do, you know, sims at, at one to two, two to three, three to four, and not have time built in there. We have time built in. You're, you know, somebody's gonna have to get in there, clean up and reset, and clean up at the end of the day. Okay, alcohol or orange cleaners also work pretty darn good. Well, that's real nice. They, they do use, you know, for makeup removers. Uh, any makeup remover is pretty good too. Again, though, we'll tell you to please clean the mannequin after that. Uh, if you're using, like, uh, acetone, not good on those skins. If you're gonna use it, you gotta get it off real quick. So. Again, going right back over. The one thing that we have heard works good, we have not been able to trial it yet, is this one. Clear Silk or any other type of, uh, what is it, like the 10% uh, <coughs> material, I forgot whatever you call it. Yeah, and some UV light. But the warning is don't put your UV light source on there for a really long time, like 10 or 15 minutes, probably should be good. Uh, it has cleaned up a number of mannequins. I've not had the opportunity to trial it myself yet, but I've other uh, people in my position that have done it said it worked. Okay. Each scenario that we give for you, we also are making up a moulage system for it, and it's a specific moulage for that scenario. It's gonna have step-by-step -step instructions, plus we're gonna, it's gonna have on there, and I'll show you here in just a second. Here it is, you know, this is a two, page deal with this one that we're condensing them to one page, but it tells you what the equipment is, where it's located, a cost, and obtained from. Now, this could be cost and obtained from are probably going to be a little different depending on, you know, who you are, where you are, but this is what we do for our center so that when you're redoing this, when you go to do it that second time, you've got a pretty easy system set out, and those things will all be ready for you in your binders. Uh, by the third week. Are you going to have a, like, I know we have this handout here. Yep. But you'll have a, do you have a list of recommended submissions stuff too? You betcha, yeah. All of that will be in those. Uh, these sheets, like I said, you'll get this whole sheet. It, it takes you right through that pretty nice. It allows other, you know, two or three of you to actually get in and do the work rather quickly. Yeah. In this case, it was, you know, it even talks about how long these heat packs last if you're using heat packs. Everything's in there to try make it as simple as possible. We know that our, you know, time's expensive. If we can cut down our time, it's a good deal. It even talks about production time. We uh, did some initial ones that were taking us about an hour once we got our system down, generally 15 or 20 minutes. But that's because we have the system down. When we tried it without doing the system, it was consistently about an hour. So. Okay. Barriers. If you're not familiar with these, we're going to show you a few of these different ones, but many times it's going to save you cleanup time and it's going to save staining on these mannequins if you use some type of barrier. Barriers are pretty simple. You know, it, we'd use real people, we'd use uh, barriers, coal cream. Uh, I used to use a lot of new skin. Anybody familiar with that for first aid? Boy, you put that on, on a, a real person, and then you build your moulage on top of that. When you go to clean them up, you just scrape your moulage off, you put on some more new skin, and just wipe the stuff off. And it works really nice. Plus, it didn't, you didn't get in near the reactions that we had, because a lot of people were allergic to some of our moulage stuff. But putting the new skin on, you know, we didn't have that problem. We don't use new skin on these guys. But typical ones, rubber cement, tegaderm. You know, you can get Tegaderm in really nice sizes, and I'll show you some of that stuff. Uh, there's also some different makeups, such as the pancake makeups you can use as a barrier there. Uh, there's also commercial products. In fact, some of them are called skin barriers, or barriers that, again, these come from uh, theater, etc. You can put them on, let them dry first, put the makeup on before. It helps in removal. You know, it, it, it does some good stuff. 
Um, if you want to cut down cleanup time, cleanup time is a pain anyway, so these things will help out. I've found that I, I'm getting more and more of a fan of rubber cement. Yes, it still is tough to clean up, but it's nowhere near as tough as some of the stuff. And on Medi, I've found that it comes off much easier than on layered all products. Does latex, like you know, the actual uh, yep. movie latex, does that mm -hmm. Yeah, on some of the skins, yes. On some of the skins, it won't stick at all. <laughs> That's one of those things we found out, like I said, they use different uh, composition in some of these skins. And you know, you, I'd put the latex on and it doesn't work. Now there's also different types of latex. Uh, the real liquid latex, and then there's a thicker latex. I like the thicker stuff, so. Okay, the other thing is less is better. Too many times we get people that you know, put moulage on and makeup on by the pound. Uh, you'll find that just a little bit goes an awful long ways. Blending it in really works nice. You know, uh, I would be more concerned with using too much than using too little, which is a bit of a surprise. I mean, uh, you know, most of us, more is better. You know, bump it up to 220 instead of you know, 120, uh, this type of thing. But it truly, with the colors, a little bit does work better. The other aspect of this, this is one of the things we found. Cheaper is better. When we go out for some of these things, you know one of our big suppliers right now? Dollar store, yeah. Dollar store makeup. It is the cheapest crud you can get. It goes on really nice and it comes off really nice. That's the neat part about cheapness there. So be aware of that, that that, you know, that can be your friend. The dollar store for 10 bucks, you can get a lot of stuff. So, uh, you know, the eyeshadows are one of the things we use. The eyeshadows are great colors. One thing we'll tell you though is be aware there's those shiny ones. <laughs> shiny ones are shiny. Great for eyeshadows, but not really great for, you know, building the colors into the mannequins. Other thing we found to use, and when we get you, you know, we're going to give you these kits, and they're going to contain a lot of different stuff, but one of the things we've found are washable markers work really nice, and they come off really nice. Uh, a disclaimer here, Crazy Art is the one we like. We have used crono cr cronola? Cronola? Crayola, yeah. Cronola, I guess it's something else. But <laughs> Crayola ones. We've used them, but they're too bright of colors. They are nice colors for kids, but using them on the mannequins, they were too bright. They didn't look real. When we got to these, they had a crazy art, actually had a much more human looking color. So other things we use are certain types of washable paints. Now when I say certain types, because there are some that do stain, there are some that don't. Can I give you a listing of all those? It depends on the skins. So some work on some skins. Yeah, Tim. Is it easier if we only need this stuff just to get it from here? Or? Probably not because we don't, you know, we don't keep a whole supply, but we'll start you out with some of the supplies. Okay. And then from there, you know, and we'll even let you know where we buy them. Okay. You know, because nothing's going to be a secret. <laughs> yeah. Where is this coming out of if we have to buy supplies? Who's purchasing these? Your, your hospitals have agreed to a certain amount of funding on this. So uh, as to what happens, I don't really know. <laughs> the health systems have all been notified that the disposable supplies, such as these items, are their responsibility. If you have any problems with that, contact me and I will contact them. So that is in you know, the contract that they signed, that disposable supplies are their responsibility. You know, uh, guess-wise, you know, a uh, hundred bucks or so a year is probably going to really, you know, go a long way in the, the moulage supplies if you're paying attention to what you're buying. You know, it also will depend on how much simulation you're doing. But uh, again, uh, we look for stuff. I check stuff. I go, after Halloween, I go out and I buy a lot of supplies. You know, and I usually wait till I get 90% off. You know, and I do buy a lot of that stuff so that I've got a lot of it on hand 
I'm able to spread it out over the years, but every Halloween I'm waiting for the after Halloween sales and I've scoped out all the different places. Ooh, big one. You don't really need to pay attention to this, but it's, this is one of the things, Shkin is one of the ones that we do like. I'll show you this. We're working with two other uh, formulas right now, trying to make some of these things up. But the idea here is the fact that uh, a couple things. The acrylic paint, uh, cream or ceram coat, medium flesh acrylic paint is the one that really does match well. Now, if you can find that, wow, you're probably doing better than we are, even though we did find it at one point. Then they stopped carrying it, <laughs> so we had to find another one. Again, you're going to wind up doing a little bit of color matching here, and sometimes you're not going to get the exact color, but you're going to have to add a few you know, get yourself a nice color wheel so you know what to add to change the colors. But it's a little bit of experimentation. So, and we'll talk about this and show you some of it. You know, what can you do? You can do a lot. It doesn't take a lot to actually create a tremendously good moulage, but it does take a little bit of time. So this is a couple of stuff we've done. Uh, you know, this is one of our PD kids that have gone really good. Uh, we do a, uh, you know, a shirt, one of these chemical shirts where we melt it first, and then when I do the moulage, I just embed that right into the moulage for the burn, so it's melted right into his skin. Uh, it looks real nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> now, one of the things I've found, especially in doing burns, is that these things take time to develop and uh, to make. So I've actually started making some of them the night or two or three days before and using Tegaderm, where I've been able to make a chunk of it in advance. And we'll show you this, but then you've got something you can put on and all you have to do is blend in the edges. Less time to prepare. Also, I'm, I'm trying to see if I can use that multiple times. You know, takes a little bit more effort, but it does work out pretty good. Uh, so there's a lot of different stuff we can do. There's a lot of stuff we can play with. You know, this is Junior made up from a flash burn. Uh, second and third degree burns. You know, first, uh, first, second, and third degree does work pretty good. Uh, you know, your limitations are your mannequins. You know, obviously, when you get these areas, you know, not much you can do about that. We try to usually pull the sleeves down. But again, the one thing to remember is the skin on these, the hands are different than the face in many cases. This one, face and chest are all the same, so it's nice. But it is several different types of plastic. Well, you can make some darn good looking stuff. Well, ah, uh, yep. These, these blisters are actually bubble wrap. The big stuff you get, okay, you can add with a little bit of you know, patience. You can add whatever color you'd like in there. Yeah, it does look pretty darn gross. You have to trim nicely around the edge and you glue them flat on, but you inject everything from the back. You can make them. You can make them as gross looking as you want color wise. You can actually add a little stink to them if they break them, etc. There is a lot of that stuff you can do. We have, uh, we've done knee effusions uh, where you, you know, pretty darn neat where you can, you know, the knee's swollen, you push on one side and it pops out the other side. You know, we're, we build those things. We, you know, uh, between Jamie and I, we sit down and it's like, okay. Here's what we need. How can we do it? Here's what's got to make it look real. Uh, although, I've got to tell you a story. Jamie was doing one of these uh, blister deals. He's trying all sorts of different materials in there. Uh, things like hand cleaner. Uh, you're trying to figure out something that would, you know, because some blisters are real thick and gooey. Other ones are real thin. So he's doing this in his office. And sure as heck, he's pushing on it with a syringe through a needle. He wasn't using a real thick, or a real yeah, a real thick needle. He's using a real thin one and trying to push something rather thick through it. Uh, the next, next thing we hear is this, uh-oh. <laughs> a, he's not able to find the needle because this thing just exploded. 
B, there's stuff all over his office. <laughs> so, ah, I think we're not going to use that one. Well, in fact, to this day, I don't think he ever did find the needle where it went, but <laughs> we were having some real fun making these things up. You know, you can make it. It's, it's your imagination is the only thing that is your limiting factor here. Oh, the rash was just pure makeup. Again, I, it's, we used uh, the washable markers yeah. on those, and you know, just using the little dots with that and adding so you to it. Added the dot and the color, then with yep. the texture. Mm -hmm. oh. And and some of them we add do, do add texture too, and we can add. It will show you some of the different stuff in the rooms there. So, uh, again, body fluids. We use all sorts of stuff here. Because when you add to it, you know, when you got that person coming over from the nursing home that's, you know, or the little kid in the, with the diaper, you, it really does make an impression when you can make that up real. <laughs> and it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to do these things. Okay, the other thing we've started finding out that is usable and it is pretty neat are the tattoos you can buy. And they're not that expensive. I think, you know, the actual price on them is like says 275. We paid a lot less for them. But the tattoos, they are, you know, theatrical tattoos. They are looking much better. They are, again, not real expensive. I have not been able to find a way to reuse them. Are those the ones where you put, put them on water? Uh, on the back side? Yeah. They just stick? They're, they're, they're a water sticker. But yeah. You know, meaning that you do have to get them all wet to apply them, but it's not, you, you don't soak them in water or anything. Uh, we've tried taking some of them off, not real with great success to be reusing. You can take them off, you know, but the nice thing with those, we've found that they can stay on much longer. And they don't permanently, you know, adhere. So those are pretty neat. You can also either purchase or make stuff that you can reuse, and we'll show you some of that. Uh, because those things do work. You know, uh, the the pre-made professional ones, you can get the strap-on stuff too, but you know, the strap-on stuff, when you cut all the clothes away, it's real obvious. You know, so we tend to stick away from that a lot unless we're using situations where we know we're not going to have the clothes cut off. So, you know, and it's just some wounds we made up again using uh, washable markers, the the eye uh, the the eye shadows, etc. You know, we can make them up pretty good. They do, I don't know if they look that good to you, but you know, up here it's when you're looking at something, you're so close to it, you really can't see. But with a little bit of effort, you really can do a lot. You know, uh, when I told this one is actually a, a one I've made up, we've kept permanently on the gene because I use it for different, uh, uh, mostly show and tell, and I've embedded it right into the jeans. <laughs> so you pull the, you know, you put the jeans on, the wound is part of them, because it's all glued into it. <laughs> you know, you can make things that look really good. Uh, but like I said, the drawback there is, uh, this one we use for strict tourniquet, where they're just going to, in the field, they can go ahead and put a tourniquet right above it, right over the jeans, put it on tight, and it actually will cut down. In this case, yeah, we do even create pumping wounds. All of these mannequins have systems where you can have bleeding if you want it, active bleeding, <coughs> you know, that type of stuff. So you can build it into there, or you can just build one, you know, whatever you would like. Okay, food products. We do use them, but we like to avoid them as much as possible because, you know, anybody ever stuck something in the refrigerator for three weeks, four weeks, you know, what happens? They grow a lot of mold. So we try to avoid fruit, food products. Now we can't 100% avoid them, but we do avoid them as much as possible. And also that we're very aware of we're using these things. The other thing is the mantra, we never throw anything out. When I make up a supply of blood, I store it. I have gallon jugs or whatever jugs, and it's stuck in the refrigerator for storage because it's much nicer just to go and grab that. You guys will have IV arms in these, in the deals. We're gonna, we're modifying all the IV arms. They're Laredol IV arms to the point where it's much easier to clean them and use them. 
much nicer. You'll find this out than the old system where you hang the bag and stuff up. Did away with all the bags. Uh, we'll show you those, not this week, but later. You'll like it because cleanup goes from like 45 minutes to an hour down to about 15 or 20 minutes with them. So, plus we find that they're much easier to uh, get the flashback with our system. So, avoid food products. Food coloring, we don't consider a food product, but this, we do use it a lot. Uh, what happens if you get it inside your mannequins, you are gonna get mold and growth in there. So please avoid getting them. You know, this is digging some of that stuff out. I, I do a, a, a suction lab with the, uh, with the medical students, and of course, you know, you make up yarg, how do you not make it a food product? Because I use oatmeal. Well, unless you clean that stuff up really good, you tend to get some really wicked growth in those uh, uh, mannequins. And I, I've made up, I've, I've modified a number of mannequins so that I can uh, get an awful lot of stuff, realistic INA. When they're, when we're doing the breathing form, they're getting the gargling and everything else so that it's the real sounds, etc. But, so. Possible exceptions. Uh, no direct contact with the mannequin. There's things like cream of wheat and oatmeal. If you put it in secured bags, I like dialysis bags and stuff like that where I get those really big ones and I can put cream of wheat or oatmeal in there and it's really sealed in good. And then that makes a really nice edema because when you push them down on that, whoa. You know, uh, coffee grounds, you know, things like that. Cornstarch for cornstarch can be your friend. I use cornstarch in so many different things to make it thicker. It's unreal. We'll show you that. Rice Krispies, you know, for crepitus. <coughs> Works nice. But again, those are in bags and they're sealed. Okay, again, just the reiteration there. The alcohol in the water, it does two things to be aware of. It helps retard any type of growth of bacteria or whatever else you might get in there. The other thing is it actually helps dry your material out quicker because you don't want to keep liquid in those veins for a long time because other, you know, the growth problems, etc. But if you've got a little bit of alcohol in there, they dry out much quicker. And that includes the IV arms or anything like that. So that's why all our meds are made that way. IV fluids, the same thing, the distilled water with alcohol, okay? We really, really want to avoid buildup in these mannequins. Okay, you're going to be using them a lot. We're going to talk about about every month. You're going to need to do, you know, preventative maintenance on these, of flushing them out well, drying them out. So. And we'll, uh, we'll even show you some of the containers that we use for creating IVs uh, because by creating a, a system for it, we're able to fill things much quicker, well, so you don't have to waste a lot of time. Okay, body fluids, we're gonna teach you about blood, poo, urine, puke, sweat. You know, we do make them up, we store them. I've got some of the best diarrhea stored in the refrigerator downstairs. <laughs> All different levels of it, because there's different, you know, colors and consistencies, especially for the med students, we gotta have that type of stuff. The urine, the stuff like that. Why remake it each time? We make it, we store it. If you use distilled water with a little bit of alcohol to make it, again, you don't get much growth. You know, so you can save these things much longer. We use two types of blood, internal and external. Internal blood is made with just a few drops of food coloring. It's not gonna be real red, because again, the redder you get it, the more stuff that's gonna build up in those tubing. We'd like to avoid that, okay? External, that's where I like, my personal favorite is liquid starch. You can go out and get it. I think it was, used to be called stay flow starch. I don't know if that's still around, but uh, you know, I've gone out and bought it by the gallon. It works really good with just a little bit of food coloring. Depending on the color of the starch, generally it's red and then possibly a little bit of blue to it to actually get the real blood color but you get that blood feel with that liquid starch. You know how slippery blood is, et cetera? When you get that with the liquid starch. You don't get much growth. You can, I've saved that stuff for over a year, 
and not had much growth to it. You can also add you know, clots, et cetera, to the outside type blood. It does really add to it. So. Smells. Oh, this is probably our newest, you know, in the last five to 10 years, adding smells have been such a great addition to the moulage. There's a lot of them that are commercially available. You know, you can go to these theater companies or these prank companies and, man, they have some great smells. Yeah, and you can order GI bleed and you can order, you know, all these different things. You know, uh, it doesn't take much. It takes just a little imagination. What do we have that really smells and smells like it should? Uh, although I still find the best one for, you know, that the drunk is going and buying the stinkiest alcohol smell you can buy. I went out to Happy Harry's a couple of years ago. Well, anybody, how many people know who Larry Weber was? Okay, Larry was a great paramedic. He worked with us. I, I got to work with him as an EMT, an EMT intermediate, and as a paramedic. That's he was through all three. Then he went on to work for the state. Larry, unfortunately, was an alcoholic. Recovered. He had a few relapses over the years. You know, I probably knew him only for about. 25 years or so, but few relapses, etc. He, uh, he used to have me do teaching in the instructor portion, especially you know how to make these things real. One of them I used to like to bring in was the alcohol. You know, there's something about dealing with a patient who's really got that stench of alcohol that really sets you back, and especially for new learners, that was something they had to get used to. So I went out to Happy Harry's one time and said, I need. And I explained what I was doing. I said, I need the stinkiest stuff you got. And the guy just lit up and he said, I got something for you. I said, here, let me go downstairs and get it. And he went downstairs and brought this stuff up. And he said, here, and he open, you know, how many times they open up a bottle of alcohol for you? And he opens up and smell this. And it was, it was stinky. Anybody ever heard of lime lizard? I think that's the stuff that was. And it was like, what, lime lizard. And, he said, wait, nobody buys this stuff anymore. We've got a couple bottles of it still downstairs. Gave me a great deal on it. Uh, the, the reason I brought Larry Weber into it was I was in teaching that weekend for Larry at this EMT instructor deal, and we did this. We had these people gargle with this stuff. And then you, you know, literally will go up and put your arm around the person, you know, and start talking to them, you know, because you're here to save them, and this guy breathes on them, and it's like, People were, the skin was melting off their face. It was so horrible. <laughs> then I gave Larry the uh, receipt for this to get reimbursed. <laughs> and he looked at this <laughs> and he threw it back at me. He said, no way in hell am I turning this in. <laughs> I said, Larry, you know, it's an expense. I'm supposed to be reimbursed for this. He said, think about it. I'm an alcoholic. I'm turning in a receipt to the state of North Dakota for alcohol. He said, A, you know, we don't reimburse for alcohol in, under most situations. And B, they know me. <laughs> How am I going to explain this? So uh, I had to spend my own money on it, but not bad. OK. Uh, edema, you know, memory foam, cream of wheat. Again, you can put those in that bag, and it makes a great edema. OK. You know, uh, the one thing we tell people is if you're going to do the lower leg, don't forget the foot. I mean, how many times do you see a patient that has tremendous edema on the lower legs and it doesn't extend into the foot? Wrap the foot, too. Memory foam is great. If you can ever go and find somebody that's getting rid of one of those memory foam mattresses the top, whatever, take that. You can use it for a long time. It's a little bit expensive to buy. Clothing sizes, it's in there because be aware you're going to have to get some clothing at different times for your mannequins. You want to have them dressed appropriately for that. These are the sizes, uh, you know, X, XL to double XL pants. A little larger is better because putting them on can be a pain if they're just fit, just right. Not a good deal. Okay. We go to the secondhand stores, we ask for donations, we get our old clothes. You know, for those of you guys that know me from all true, when you start looking at stuff, you're gonna see my boots, my pants, you know, stuff that, you know, they fit those mannequins. When I get rid of them, you know, come over here. Uh, they're lost and found from the hospitals. You know, 
you can go and get clothes from there. You don't have to necessarily go and buy them because what does your hospital do with lost and found? About every 30 days, that clothes gets dumped. Well, so talk to your laundry, okay? Also, new clothes don't look so good. You know, how many times do you see a patient dressed in really nice new clothes? Not very often. So, old clothes are better. Smelly clothes, told you this, you know, that smell really adds to it. You got that homeless person who's been living out there in their tent, they smell like a campfire. So what you do, night before or week before, fire up a little wood fire, put some clothes by it. Let them get stunk in the smoke really good. Then you store them in plastic bags. Otherwise that stench permeates everything. But that smell will stay in. We've been using some ours for two years now. I haven't had to re Activate it by taking it out, lighting a fire, and getting stuff going. You know, it works. It adds to it. And <coughs> let's see. Questions? You know, snide remarks, excuses, jokes. I was told to be done by 9 o'clock. Guess what? It's 9 o'clock.